And in terms of earthquakes, this is the map of the Philippines, and each dot here in the Philippine map represents one earthquake event. In average, we have at least 20 earthquakes recorded by FIVOX every day. The only place in the Philippines that has no earthquake generator is Palawan. So, is it safe to say that it's better to live in Palawan? No, because Palawan can still be affected by tsunami and a strong ground shaking caused by the movement of falls in Mindoro and Negros Island. For this year, we have a uh, there are at least six significant earthquakes. The earthquake in Surigao in February with a magnitude of 6.7, and then it was followed by an earthquake in Batangas. It's a, it's a, what we call it is an earthquake swarm, wherein for two weeks, Batangua, Batangas has recorded more than 3,000 earthquakes. And after Batangas, there was an earthquake in Lano del Sur, followed by an earthquake in General Santos, and then last month, we have the earthquake in Leyte. The fault that moved in Leyte and, Batang and in Leyte and Surigao is what we call the segments of the Philippine fault. This segment of the Philippine fault, we have already identified it, we have already mapped it in 2007. Personally, I am the one who did that map. So, whenever we point on a uh, in Surigao and in Leyte, the fault that we have pointed out in 2007, that's the point that it ruptured during the, this event in 2017. The upper line is the effect of the 1990 Luzon earthquake and the magnitude 7.2 Buhol earthquake. The magnitude 7.2 Buhol earthquake is very significant because in Buhol Island in the past 400 years, there was no strong earthquakes. That's the reason why we have this historical search, uh, historical churches. If there's an earthquake in Metro Manila, we are expecting a magnitude 7.2 event. It's the same ground shaking that was felt in Bohol. It's the same effect that was happened in Bohol. So in the past, strong earthquakes have already affected Metro Manila and vicinity. One of the significant earthquakes was the 1968 Casiduran earthquake, wherein a six-story residential building located in Binondo, Manila, collapsed after the earthquake. There is a, the, the very critical part of this is that the source of the earthquake that damaged Ruby Tower is 250 kilometers away from Metro Manila. The source of, of the earthquake is in Casiduran, Aurora. It killed more than 200 people in Ruby Tower. So what if, what if the fault that will move from this hotel is just that is around four to five kilometers away? It's in Pembo area. In terms of historical earthquakes, when you visit Manila Cathedral, try to read the historical marker, and from that historical marker, you can say we can tell that Manila Cathedral was partially destroyed by an earthquake of 1600s. Then again, it was destroyed by another earthquake of 1645. Based on our study, this 1645 event is one of the largest earthquakes in Met that was felt in Metro Manila. And this earthquake was generated by a fault in Jogaldon, Nueva Ecija, very close to the source of the earthquake of the 1990 Luzon earthquake. And then again destroyed by another earthquake of 1863. But in terms of churches, not all churches can be damaged by an earthquake. For example, if you go to Guadalupe Church, the Guadalupe Church withstood the earthquakes of 1645, 1754, and 1863. The difference between these two churches is that there have differences in the foundation. In Manila, the foundation there is very soft sediments because it's close to the sea, close to the Pasig River, while in Guadalupe or in Makati, 